What's good, party people? This is According to Woods, and I have the honor and privilege of talking to a LA Dojo, New Japan LA Dojo uh, prospect, graduate. He is a Bloodsport Barnett, uh, Josh Barnett Bloodsport competitor. He's actually returning this year uh, for Bloodsport 9. He's the one, the only, the android, Alex Coughlin. What's Thank you on? very much. Hey, man, thanks for having me on. This is the second time. I remember uh, coming on before Bloodsport uh, many moons ago and uh, excited to talk about uh, who I'm going to beat the shit out of next. Yeah, absolutely. Which, uh, I mean, it's uh, uh, it's funny that you graduated from a New, Do New Japan dojo because it's a it's a Japanese gentleman that you're uh, you're going to be uh, duking it out with. Yeah, it's a guy I lived with for a couple of years that uh, that I trained with for a long time in Yuya, which just means that we know each other very well. So it's going to be uh, very strategic in that way. But look at my history. We wrestled twice before, once in the Young Lions Cup 2019, where uh, I made him tap. And then again, last year at Warrior Wrestling, where I pinned him. So I have all my bases covered. I ain't too worried about it, but I will not take him lightly. No, I know, absolutely. I know you, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. But also, you look know, at him. He's, he's getting all the reps in now. He's, he's everywhere. He was on the fucking Jericho Cruise. Yeah, he's, he's just going every, everyone wrestling. loves him. Impact, it's yeah. the hair, it's it's the beautiful hair. I bet they gotta right. get their posters, and that's the thing about it, right? It's just mm -hmm. like, yes, you guys have faced each other two times before, but you guys are both a wealth of experience base larger than you were the first two outings. That you know, and uh, obviously, the terms of conditions of blood sport, no ropes. Right. It's a very different environment. You're right. The last two times we were in a traditional ring, more or less. This time, no ropes, no pinfalls. Very different. But I will say he wrestled two blood sports, and I've done – this will be my sixth. Mm -hmm. So as far as experience in the, in the different setting of blood sport, then I think I have the upper hand there too. There you go. I mean, experience, right? You know, mm -hmm. uh, you, I mean, stay ready so you don't have to get ready, right? That's the always. Idea. Yep, that's how we uh, that's how we operate at the LA Dojo. But you know, Yuya is also in the LA Dojo, so he does the same thing. So we'll both be ready. I know this is. I mean, again, I mean, I every time I'm with Josh, I'm like, yeah, blood sport. I just want to talk blood sport. That's it. And like training with. Antonio Inoki and Billy Robinson, and you guys, you know, one of the things about being at the LA Dojo is you and Yuya both got to train with, I mean, a former UFC champion, uh, like multiple time world champion in grappling alone, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, I mean, did you ever train with Yuya, at, you know, where Josh is at? Actually, yes, a couple times. Uh, again, I'd like to give a huge shout out, thank you to CMMA over in California, we're, we're Josh would operate out of and all the other coaches like like Chad and um, all the guys there. Every time they would allow us to come in and train with them, it was a great learning opportunity. Everybody was super cool um, and very helpful. And I always when I always come out of there very tired, but I feel like I advanced a noticeable amount with everybody. It's a great environment. Huge shout out to them. And um, yeah, training with Josh is a different beast. I mean, I trained with Katsuyori Shibata for years but you know josh is a, a big strong man who has a very different fighting style so i am always happy to be under the learning tree of uh josh as well yeah absolutely and uh, again shout out to uh cmma in gardena california uh chad george josh barnett and actually uh victor henry is actually fighting this saturday victor yeah he's popping off i'm super happy for him yeah he's awesome Another really cool dude, really helpful, and a, you know, a monster, just an ass kicker. Yeah, man. I mean, he's, uh, you know, in it, his first fight with the UFC, which I mean, was, I mean, it should have came three years before it came, but mm -hmm. it's glad that it did. But I mm -hmm. mean, this is right off the bat. Joe Rogan is shouting him out just on the podcast, like ar arguably one of the biggest podcasts in the world. Absolutely. That's, and it's for good reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's very talented. It's long overdue for Victor. So what, I mean, what is that? I mean, not to give too much of the secret away uh, because they've got champions from literally, you know, 125 pound males and females, right? All mm -hmm. the way up into the, the heavyweights, you know, like 
no more evident than Josh Barnett, right? So, I mean, what's so special about that place at CMMA that you've been there? It's, you know, again, just the atmosphere, just the, the mentality of everybody training there. It's not just a hobby for anybody. Everybody there wants to win. They want to be champions. And, and they're all, um, you know, super, they're all there for a reason. And, you know, being somebody at this level in a room full of people at this level, you got to step up and, and, you know, you got to try to learn and keep up with them. I, you know, got a long way to go, but getting in there in that different training, especially at a place like CMMA where they take everything so seriously. Um, it's really helped my game. And again, we went there with Yuya once or twice, but, uh, Again, I have him in more sessions over there. He's a good wrestler. He wrestled in college, Greco Roman, yeah. but it's a different beast over there. Different breeze. Yeah, absolutely. When you uh, add that submission, uh, you know, Arsenal, right? Where, mm -hmm. you know, in collegiate wrestling, you don't necessarily get to implore. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost frowned upon in some circles, you know? Uh, exactly. It's a different beast, you know? So he has a strength for sure. Like we would wrestle a lot in training, obviously, and he's very strong. But again, like you're saying, with the submissions, with the finishing, especially in blood sport where you're not pinning people, you know, it's not about points. It's not about takedowns. It's about finishing. So we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. And for those who don't know, obviously in blood sport, as we kind of mentioned before, no ropes, absolutely no ropes. It's under the GCW could like him. So you're going to see a lot of the, you know, same sponsorship on the mats, but it's a completely different beats. And mm -hmm. there's only two ways to win. I mean, knockouts and submissions. I mean, we saw Cal Jack in a previous incarnation of Bloodsport literally throw somebody against the wall yep. for his knockout. That was really cool. So, yeah, yeah there you go. So anything goes, man. You have no idea what you're going to see. 100%. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, the journey that you've... Because uh, you competed in Bloodsport 8, right? Yes. Yes. So, I mean, the journey that you've been on from Bloodsport to Bloodsport, that's that's kind of amazing so i mean what's what's been new from bloodsport to bloodsport from this past one to this one last year was uh what april right so just within that year a lot of shit happened like very soon after that i uh i tore my calf and i had to take a few months off and i was you know supposed to go to japan and i had to cancel that and it was a a very very upsetting period for me because it's been a long time since then that i've been to japan i was finally able to go back and start picking up some steam again for a world tag league which was back in november i was there for five weeks i tagged with gabriel kid you know iron bulls mechanical bulls can't even remember my own team name but you know it was it was great to be back there and man it's, <laughs> i don't want it to be that long till i go back again i know we're on the upswing and you know, i just want to throw more people over my head than just the americans over here I'm itching, man. But it's been quite a journey. But blood sport to blood sport. I had some peaks and valleys. I'm on the upswing now. I'm feeling strong again. I'm getting my momentum back. And you know, I'm picking up a couple of victories on my way. So I'm, I'm not feeling rusty at all. I'm not feeling winded at all. I'm back at 100%. And uh, honestly, hopefully 2023 is going to be my year. Knock on wood. No injuries. And uh, yeah, just taking over like I should have been the past couple of years. No, I mean, I, I you were on a, 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 I mean, a upward trajectory, and it's it's crazy to see all of you, you know, trainees at the LA Dojo, right? Because I mean, yes, there have been previous incarnations of a uh, New Japan LA Dojo. You know, one that comes to mind as, you know, kind of growing up in LA, there was the Santa Monica Dojo. You know, mm -hmm. back in the times of Anoki, and then when you look at the talent that came out of that one or two what years or three years i think it was it was a very short very time short span time. which is weird thinking back on it because you know it's the og dojo it's the lineage i like a lot of people trained out of there we got yeah danielson samoa joe rocky romero mm -hmm. uh my goodness chris daniels I, I mean that's just shinsuke nakamura just off the top of my head it's and again who's who of all the places herb that, dean herb dean yeah yeah absolutely a lot of people forget that. and they, Yeah, they a lot of people were there. Yeah, I, I remember every time I see somebody, like Ricky Reyes, too, he's running mm -hmm. through a lot of the strong tapings. You'd be like, yeah, Boss Rutten came in one day, and I get to hear about Boss Rutten training, and then Ken Shamrock comes in another day, and that's always cool. It's it's amazing to hear, like, what happened in that dojo and how different it is from the modern dojo from what we did, but in some ways similar. It's just crazy. It's like alternate universe LA dojo. 
except we're not making money yet. So we'll, we'll get there. So we'll yeah. the Brian stage later, <laughs> but let's fast forward a few years and we'll get there. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, uh, I mean, it's just uh, crazy. Now you did mention the world tag lead and I don't want to, you know, gloss over that, but my goodness, like as a fan, you've got, I mean, we're talking about like Hanson Brody, like, I mean, some of the biggest stars, uh, I mean, both Gaijin and foreign homegrown Jap Japanese talent, like, I mean, Hall of Famers that have basically went for that World Tag League tournament. Yeah. Uh, does that come into play? It was very cool. I was um, very excited to learn that I was going to be a part of it. Because, again, it, it, to me, it's the most prestigious tag tournament in professional wrestling. Like you said, it reads like a who's who, who's ever competed. And uh, just being able to be there and rub horns consistently with not just one, but two of some of the greatest wrestlers going today every night and just get better and improve and show people what I've been working on. I haven't just been sitting on my ass the past two and a half years since I haven't been in Japan, but finally get a chance to show with all those people just what we can do and just what the training at the LA Dojo has done and what we're capable of. And that alone was was fantastic. I mean, we didn't uh, win, unfortunately. You know, everybody goes in there, but uh, with the you know, intention to win, or else why would we be here in the first place? Right. But overall, it was a great experience. If you're, if you, you know, we didn't lose. We, uh, we learned. Yeah, absolutely. Which I mean, does that, you know, obviously being from the LA Dojo, right? And we mm -hmm. talked about the history of you know the previous incarnation, and even Shibata as a head trainer. There's a lot on it. But did you feel like you had to prove yourself? If it's LA Dojo, American working the shows here, representing New Japan is different than representing the la dojo in japan it, mm -hmm. you know like is what's that like it was uh, it's a strange dynamic because there's always been this disconnect between new japan strong and uh new japan proper in japan and for a long time i always felt like it was two separate companies like there's barely any connection i wasn't over there it's it felt so separated so it was almost strange to go back like it felt so weird being in a different country doing the same thing trying to wrestle as i have been but it was great because like this is you know where i we should be you know in japan going over there kicking ass in front of those crowds touring everywhere being on all the big shows and uh it was just a taste of things to come and you know i'm hungry for more but uh representing the la dojo it was a uh, in some ways, I would say maybe nervous to be like, oh, people are expecting, oh, LA Dojo. I was like, these people haven't seen me in two and a half years. There are no expectation. So I'm going to go in there and just focus on blowing everybody out of the water, do, do whatever I can to, to make an impression. So it was less nerves, more ambition and determination to, to sort of seize the opportunity in that regard and really show with the LA Dojo and just me as an individual and me and Gabe as a tag team, the mechanical bulls could do. No. And it's, uh, it's amazing to see you guys just grow and flourish and especially under the auspices of the, the world tag league, but that injury, you know, not to harp on, you know, what was a, a strenuous, you know, couple i mean a season in your life but i mean we've seen people come back stronger right and i mm -hmm. think you know we can think about like triple h you know with the the torn quads and everything like that you could think about i mean most recently you know with cody rhodes coming back from the torn pack and look at the trajectory he's on mm -hmm. uh were you kind of looking at those and going like yeah this lights a fire yeah i thought i loved it before but this because i'm away from it i mean mm -hmm. literally i can't physically do what i used to uh did that light a fire more so than you would maybe if you maybe had been healthy it, it there's been a few points where i've had to take some time off and where i feel like i've had to play catch up and every time i've had to do that it's it's been noticeable growth in my game because like you're saying and the off time, it's like, what can I do besides work out, besides training in the ring? It's fucking get creative and really focus on the, the smaller things that I wouldn't normally have the, the thought or the energy to think of before and really get into the nitty gritty. So it forced me to be creative, forced me to work on things that I normally wouldn't look at. And um, in some ways, you know, life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. So you focus on other things 
like your promo game or this and that or what you want to do psychology or whatever. You're just always thinking, always trying to grow. It's it's on my mind 24-7, especially, you know, when I have all the downtime that an injury provides me. But, uh, yeah, every time I uh, get injured, I come back stronger, you know, like the sayings. Uh, and stronger you did. And uh, you came back with a, a, a new moniker, the, the Android, right? Mm -hmm. Which, uh, that it's cool to me as an Android user myself. And I, that's probably not why you went with the Android, but uh, you, in my mind, you did that to piss Apple off. I, I hope you're not wrong. my iPhone. Oh. <laughs> I ain't living the gimmick, man. Oh, <laughs> I'm too used to the interface. Fuck Steve Jobs. Fuck Apple. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> yeah. But, but, yeah. Where, where does that the phone. Yeah, but where does the, the Android come from? What does that mean to you? There were a few very important factors that led me into the, the Android, which uh, one was the graduating class of the LA Dojo. In order, it was Carl, who became the Alpha Wolf, and then Clark, who became the Wild Rhino. So, you know, the rule of threes, uh, some people, you know, they had the expectation set where Alex is going to be adjective animal. What kind of animal is he going to be? And that really bugged the shit out of me. Because that's their ideas. They thought of them independently. And I went through the same fucking training and did it longer because they graduated before me. And I fucking stayed there and did all this shit. I get to pick my own gimmick. You don't get to say I'm an animal. And I, you, know, you, you, you make your own fucking gimmick. You, you train for, with Shibata for four years and drive them around. Then you could be whatever animal you want. It's my idea, my gimmick. But um, it's just similar to where, you know, the injuries. I've had to take time off before. And every time I come back. I get stronger. I am not, you know, it's a, just a very close, you know, it was a passion project of mine. You know, I thought about it while I was injured. I had a, which I can't even remember what I was hurt that time. I just had COVID. I had to cancel another tour to Japan. And I was really upset at that time, which is when I focused a lot of creative energy into the, uh, the idea initially. But, um, you know, I was programmed in the LA Dojo. I'm stronger than I look, and I look pretty strong to begin with. And, you know, you try to beat me down, I come back like the Terminator. You're going to have to crush me to kill me. I'm not a man. I'm an android. You look at me, I look like a man. But what am I really made of? I'm much more. Ah, oh, man, I love it. Uh, which, funny that uh, you say that, because I've just been messing around with uh, chat GPT. You know it. You know of it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I did the, uh, I, I threw, like, give me 10 generic uh, <laughs> NXT nicknames. Right? Yeah, right. I got the, the idea from uh, Steve Kaufman, who runs, like, the Ric Flair show and uh, Click List and, and stuff like that. And uh, one of them actually came pretty close to, uh, to old Carl's uh, actual name. Really? NXT, yeah. Nice. Yeah, Eddie so... <laughs> So it's That's not, funny. it's not off. It's not yeah. off. So you, I think you might have uh, got the start of a wave, right? With all the chat bots and everything. And you're the Android. And I don't know. There's just some cohesion that I see there. Uh, it's even it's serendipity, that. man. It's all yeah. synchronicity, whatever big S word it's supposed to be. One of those two. Yeah. One's a police song. album. One's a, yeah, 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 like, exactly. Tale, <laughs> yeah. Movie. So synchronicity, synchronicity too. What word am I thinking of? I mean, either either fits. I feel. I, I feel like both of them both fit. Uh, but I mean, speaking of uh, Carl, man, like uh, mm. NXT. Did, I mean, did you guys kind of foresee that? Like, obviously, you guys once you graduate the dojo, you go your ways. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if it's expected, but at least the optics of us on the outside looking in. You know, you stick with New Japan and do that. We see Jay White, uh, Dave Finley as you know two like most recent uh examples of it and especially being gaijin talent um was that kind of like not the parkour uh, like you said a lot of people who basically go through the trouble of going through the system at the point of you know spending all the time to graduate from the dojo they typically stick with it but um you know carl had his reasons of course and, you know, we still, we're still very close. We'll talk all the time. and But he's just over in Florida doing his thing now. And, you know, it's, it's not. But, you know, you got to do what makes you happy. And as long as he's happy, I support whatever he does 
wherever he goes, whatever he does, wrestling or not. But uh, yeah, it's funny you mentioned that before the thing with uh, Eddie Thorpe. He got the name because uh, you know Eddie. That's his middle name, mm-hmm. Carl Edward Fredericks. And Thorpe is a, uh, I'd say his favorite athlete. I want to make sure I get the details right. It's from Jim Thorpe. Olymp- yep, Jim Thorpe, Olympic yeah. gold medalist, mm-hmm. Native American icon, inspiration yes. hero. So that's where that one came from. I saw like people talking shit, but no, it's it's a good name. It's oh, it's cool. great, especially knowing the backstory behind it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jim Thorpe is like a legend. I mean, like he was running races, right? Like a lot of people had, you know, spent money. This is like turn of the century, right? And mm-hmm. you know, he was wearing like the bare necessities and just smoked them. Like all. he found shoes, yeah, and just ran in them. It's fucking sick. Yeah. yeah. So Eddie Thorpe. I mean, that's I, I like it. I, I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm more in love with it than I uh, than I thought I would be knowing that mm-hmm. just saying yeah but no that's i think that's amazing you know and uh i guess you know going through a dojo system right and then going into kind of nxt again i mean it it, it kind of fits that you already know you know and a lot of people you know maybe outside of the business that kind of go into that sort of confines and i don't even say it's confines because look get the proof in the pudding but like going to nxt and what have you you know, sometimes it can break them, but like you guys had gone through New Japan, which one would argue, you know, look at, I mean, my goodness, Matt Bloom, New Japan, great, right? Running the whole thing, right? So it, it's it's kind of like a glove. It, it kind of fits. Yeah. And, you know, from what he's saying, you know, he's uh, just enjoying his time there. He's having a good time. He's doing his best to adjust. It's a different style of wrestling, but from right. what I've seen, you know, he's had a couple of matches. It doesn't seem like he's, you know, compromising it's still carl yeah so i'm very happy onward and upward i'm very excited for what he's going to be doing yeah absolutely and again you know going back to bloodsport nine like you and you yeah man like you guys training together and you know this is i mean you guys were on a bloodsport heart together but not against each other and now Mm -hmm. it's just like the again serendipitous Mm -hmm. right um it, it just kind of feels right and you know, with both of your guys' backgrounds, you know, and what you guys have been through over the last several years, you know, I think this, you know, kind of, pardon the pun, arena suits you guys both. I, I'm I'm excited for everybody that, you know, comes to watch Bloodsport on the 30th, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and you can catch it live on Fight TV, just saying. Uh, but I'm excited. I'm super excited for it. Uh, not just because I love the hybrids that, you know, I mean, to me, Pro wrestling is a combat sport in the, you know, instance of Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, and everything like that, because they're, I mean, literally what you call Jiu Jitsu, you know, 100 years ago was catch wrestling. So you're, we're right there. And you guys are, I mean, uh, the principle of it, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, you just look at the family tree of combat sports. We're yeah, all very absolutely. closely related on the same branch. Absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, again, you know, that you're doing it for, for Josh Barnett, who, mm-hmm. again, like, yeah, you know, a lot of his accolades, you know, kind of get swept under the rug. But I mean, former IWGP champion, like that's mm-hmm. that's it. Really you cool. Know? Also, I was his first match back in back. New Japan on the Cerulean mat in like seventeen years. Mm-hmm. He came back to wrestle me, and that was in a, one of my favorite matches. Which I uh, was lucky enough uh, to be there at Riverside Aud- in the right. Auditorium. Right? It was in Riverside. And geez, uh, first off, I mean that arena like that's that theater is just so historic yeah downtown yeah. riverside i mean i don't think it gets you know a lot of credit for you know all the architecture that is but to have that right josh's first match back in 17 years somebody that you who's had a hand in training you mm-hmm. all right absolutely and you're basically going toe-to-toe with them uh what was that like um i went in there again uh, you'd think I would have been nervous, but I was like, nah, this is this is the test. This is just everything I know. Let's see how good I am. Let's see how much I practiced. I emptied my mind and then just let instincts take over. And, uh, you know, I didn't win, but I went, what, you know, 12, 13 minutes? Mm-hmm. But, you know, former IWGP heavyweight champion, former UFC heavyweight champion. Meta Morris yeah. grappling champion. My goodness. Yeah. Star of several metal music videos, including but not limited to Amana Marth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah. For others well, in mean, there, I don't remember what they are, but there were a lot of them. Yeah. No, no disrespect to you, but I was kind of shitting bricks for you. And uh, man, you, you fucking came through. I mean, that's literally a firefight and you came through. I mean, maybe eager bros, but there, I mean, broken bones could have happened. Knockouts and concussions could happen. He came out. Fuck dudes up. I am yes. lucky. I did not get as fucked up as those dudes. Mm-hmm. So I must've been doing something right in my training to have survived that long with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, a, a lot of people, obviously when you're looking at the, you know, previous incarnations of blood sport, right. Most mm-hmm. people don't have, you know, going into six, you know, uh, runs, Right. And so what do you think that you're doing right by, you know, basically getting the, I mean, the praise of the war master? The thing is, I don't know. I just keep doing what I'm doing and I don't want to change it at all because it seems to be working. So just what I have been doing naturally, I don't want to touch it. don't want to change my routine. don't want to change my, uh, my, my way of thought, my philosophy, because it's been it's been getting me further and further. I have a good work ethic. Uh, work ethic. Uh, I'm on top of my training. Um, I always take this shit seriously, and um, it, it doesn't take much more than that. And sometimes it feels strange. It's like just showing up is ninety percent of the work, and it seems like it's much more than that. But just going there and doing it to the best of your ability is all it takes sometimes, and uh, it's hard to remember that sometimes. But you get through training. Uh, you just show up and keep doing what you're doing and you will get results. And that's what I live by. And I don't want to change that anytime soon because again, it's been working. Yeah, it's working. It's, it's definitely working. So, uh, Mm. man, more power to you. Now, obviously this is, you know, happening during, you know, mania weekend, right? Blood sport nine. Um, well, there's a lot of things that's going on that week in LA. I think Mm. it starts like the Tuesday before mania. And I mean, it's not until the Tuesday after mania, that everything kind of just settles down and returns to normal. So yeah, it's uh, like a full week, nine days or so. It's a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are there anything else that you're uh, kind of looking at, looking forward to? And uh, I, I guess I'll ask that. that but I mean, in for, in terms of the week, anything that you're looking forward to uh, aside from your matches and the things that you're involved in? Uh, later on the thirtieth, the same day as Bloodsport, there will be the New Japan Impact Wrestling crossover show which is very exciting. Uh, I'm, I think I'm one of the only LA Dojo guys not booked on the show, but everybody else will be, so that'll be cool. Well, I know there's going to be a fantastic uh, six-man X Division match with Clark and Rocky and uh, with Kevin, so that's going to be one to fucking watch out for, so keep your eyes out for that. And uh, anything Yugi is on, and he's on every show, so if you keep yeah. flipping through shows, you'll eventually see him, so keep an eye out for him after Bloodsport. Well, during Bloodsport, too, definitely watch our shit. It's going to be sick. But yeah, man, I mean, WrestleMania weekend, everything's going to be cool. I'm very excited. Always fun, especially in my home away from home, Los Angeles. So, you know, I know that place. Kind of. No, I love it. I love it. Which, I mean, I guess, I I mean, as a student of the game, are are you watching anything else? You know, kind of taking bits and pieces or just sitting back and enjoying as a fan? I mean, I'm always, I, I can't watch anything wrestling related without subconsciously taking mental notes or trying to analyze it and be like, oh, I could steal that. I could, I could do that. You know, shit like that. Or you know, whatever inspiration happens. Sometimes you see something you're like, well, what if I do it this way instead? And then you remember after a few months of making a note to do it, you finally try it out. You're like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. And then you figure out something from there. I actually just uh, spent the last couple of days training with a couple of friends at NYWC in Deer Park. And we, uh, I worked on some real cool shit. I'm very excited to uh, to show up and show out the rest of the month, which this Saturday I'm going to be in Ironheart Pro Wrestling in uh, Wisconsin, which is going to be very fun. Then the 26th of this month, I will be wrestling in Worcester, Massachusetts, or Beyond Wrestling at the White Eagle. And then uh, the 30th, of course, I'll be at the Ukrainian Culture Center in L.A. for blood sport. Then we got a couple New Japan shows coming up in April. The 15th will be in Washington, D.C., 16th Philly. Show up and show up for Philly because I fucking love that place, the ECW Arena. That's the East Coast venue we come to. It's the closest to New York, so I call it the hometown crowd. I don't know why they won't do New York, but I hope some they do. But, uh, yeah, those are all my plugs. I'm good for now. 
Oh, man, I love it. I, I absolutely love it. Um, obviously, you know, Mania, we can't talk about, like, the wrestling year without talking about, you know, either the Roman Reigns, you know, Bloodline storyline, or obviously Cody's return. Um, I mean, what is your take on it? I mean, I've did everything from what I've been seeing with the Bloodline story, everybody's saying it's just the best thing going on in wrestling. And, you know, you have some of the best wrestlers going today involved in it. So whatever they do is going to be gold. Roman Reigns, amazing. Sami Zayn, amazing. The Usos, amazing. Oh, every, whatever. Whoever else is involved in that storyline. Uh, I'm not one of those, not to be one of those guys, but I don't really keep up with the WWE storylines too closely. Besides watching Carl stuff. Eddie. Um, yeah, uh, I've been seeing stuff and it's always really cool. And, you know, the past year of Sammy being hilarious, seeing clips. Uh, yeah, so all that stuff is going to be very exciting. And, you know, as a fan, I would like to see more of it, too. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, you know, I, I might know this gentleman named uh, Eric Bischoff, uh, creator of the NWO, former president of WCW. Oh, uh, yeah, that guy, yeah. Yeah, that guy. Uh, he says that the bloodline storyline is better than the nwo i'm not saying like you agree or disagree but i mean uh, what's your take on that um it's cool you know eric bischoff himself if he says that that's a really cool stamp on what's going on today and that's really awesome but uh personally uh i looked at i saw nwo like after the fact when it was already done i wasn't a big wcw kid Ah. i watched wwf growing up but than Japanese stuff not too long after. But, like, historically, I knew how cool the NWO was. Like, the outsiders coming in, trash and this, Hogan heel turn. A lot of cool shit happened. That fan jumping in the ring and Scott Hall stomping on his head at Bash at the Beach. Really cool stuff. But um, they have a, a long time of legacy where they have so many great moments. And if they can keep this bloodline thing going and pump it full of life and try, like they did with the NWO, even, you know, for as many uh facets and variations there were there then i feel like it could have as much historical significance maybe not so much crossover wise because you know at that point it was a big deal these people jump ship to this company and nowadays it's not just it's not a big deal anymore Mm -hmm. but as far as quality content as a wrestling fan watching absolutely 100 percent. yeah well you were talking about that crossover appeal like at the moment that you remember when the, the NWO was going at its kind of strongest, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, in Austin in, in the WWF, right? You saw everybody, you know, either doing DX, you know, cross shops, or, mm-hmm. you know, you would just walk around to the supermarket and see some sort of wrestling apparel, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And now we've got more wrestling than we could ever shake or stick at. I mean, mm-hmm. for the price of lunch for a kid today, you can get the WWE Network, right? But uh, well, um, Peacock, right? Peacock, yeah. Right. But the thing about it is, like, I'm not seeing the the Sammy or the you know the the Bloodline merchandise just you know walking the street in a non wrestling sphere. And to mm-hmm. me, that's where I'm all like. Yeah, and of course the times are different, right? You know, there's mm-hmm. so much content that you could consume. You know, like mm-hmm. hours and hours on end of something that you don't necessarily know anything about, but you could go down a wormhole and mm-hmm. you're in. Uh, but I think I don't know the NWO, and I hate to just think it was about Americana it. at that yeah, point. 100%. You, you, know, you know, that's one of the things you talk about, like 1997, 1998. It was like important if you did like a one minute bunch of like little clip show summing up that year you would have to show the nw in some capacity exactly yeah, yeah. so uh, that's that's where i'm at on the thing but i mean i'm i'm glad that everybody is just you know kind of kind of falling in love with wrestling again because we need mm-hmm. that you as long as we have a great you know culture you know that supports the arts and the you know, combat sports is an art i think you know us all we're going to be better for it oh uh, yeah and it's hard to imagine It'll ever be back to the, you know, how popular it was back in the mid to late 90s, just because, you know, how different we are already, you know, as a society. But, you know, shit changes. But uh, it seems like we are slowly getting there. It's creeping up more and more and more. And we're in a really good period right now. Like, you know, the from the ashes of the UK scene, people mm. are coming up and saying they're rebuilding. And there's some phenomenal, phenomenal people over there. Uh, people are really stepping up over here too in the post pandemic. Japan's getting fucking kickstarted too. And it's been good for a few years. And I feel like now it's going to get fucking red hot. 
So um, it's cool seeing that we are, it's already good and, you know, it's getting better and better. So um, I hope we can continue this trend. No, 100%. And I love that you mentioned the UK scene because, like, mm-hmm. uh, th- this is something that you got to see firsthand. And in my, you know, estimation, I mean, I would be reading those, uh, the after mags, right? The Pro Wrestling Illustrated and, you know, the wrestler and everything like that. And hearing about guys like, you know, uh, I mean, uh, Hammerlock UK, right? Some of the promotions or Jody Fleisch and, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, after the world of sport kind of, thing kind of fizzled out in the early 80s right with big daddy and everything like that they had to rebuild right and then mm-hmm. in the like early to mid 2000s they had to rebuild and then now in like the like the mid 2010s they had to rebuild and then obviously wwe was there and then they pulled out but you've got obviously zach saber jr you've got you know um a will osprey yeah like those things so in your estimation like what did you feel was it everything that you you kind of imagined it would be going over there and wrestling in front of the british wrestling crowd yes absolutely it was it was really cool because uh i was there uh, a few it was technically my third trip over there wrestling with riff bro the first time was one dark match the second time was three matches over a couple of days where I tagged with Carl actually. And then this last time I was over there for five weeks. So it was an extended stay. It was you know, quote unquote an excursion, a diet excursion, but it was very cool. And you know, this was again, pandemic era. People are starting to get into the swing of things and people are, you know, there are a lot of spots open now because a lot of guys were, were gone from the scene and people were trying to step up. So they were super, hungry guys and they they really really always put their best into showing out i mean i wrestled both the aussie open guys uh Dunkzilla davis and kyle fletcher in singles matches huge shout out to those guys always pushed me it made me feel like a better wrestler after every time i touched them and tagged or singles anywhere great great guys can't wait to kick their asses again it will happen again um yeah, uh, Luke Jacobs, would love to wrestle him again. All these guys, I would love to wrestle. I haven't got a chance to, but, you know, Dan Maloney, uh, Connor Mills, all these guys there. And it's just a fantastic scene. And it's flourishing right now. And in a couple of years, you're going to see uh, a lot of very, very established guys being at the point where they should be now, basically, where they deserve to be now, I should say. And um, they're rebuilding, and uh, it's going to be fantastic. I love the UK scene now. It's it, It's really cool to see how it's going. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, speaking of rebuilding, in my head, uh, you you mentioned the guy, you know, kind of charging the ring with the NWO and stop all stomping a mud hole in him, right? In my cool. head, Very he cool. had like skull reconstructive surgery, right? Mm-hmm. Like he, it, Scott Hall just fucked him up. Yeah, you know, R.I.P. Scott. He's Hall. a big dude, right? Big. That's a big shoe coming down your head, man. That's like the Monty Python thing, yes. but in real life. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, have you had any uh, weird uh, interactions that you've either been in or seen, you know, maybe from beyond the curtain? Um, thankfully, well, the weirdest thing, the closest thing, I guess, uh, to that effect would be the Ring of Honor New Japan crossover show, Super, I think it was the Super Card of Honor, I can't remember. It was at a Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. And we were out there. We were, you know, seconding. We were all young lines. We were all out there against the ring by the guardrails for all the New Japan matches. And there was a big uh, four-way tag title match with uh, Sonata Naito. Uh, Sonata Evil, excuse me. G.O.D. Uh, PCO and whoever his partner was. I can't really remember. But there was the spot where PCO got power bombed from the middle of the ring out to the floor. And it was mm-hmm. insane. And then Enzo and Cass jumped the rails, and like we didn't know that was gonna happen, so we're like, "What the fuck do we do? Do we get in the ring?" It was very confusing. So that was the closest to a weird thing I've seen, and that was pretty strange. That I mean, but I mean, the fact that you're New York guy, Enzo Cass, like it yeah, was cool to be yeah, out I'm there. Yeah, saying, like honestly, it was pretty cool, pretty sick. If Absolutely. that's gonna be your one, it's yeah. pretty fucking good. Yeah, hopefully we, we I want to run out of the garden again and do a, do another big show and hopefully wrestle. It'd be sick. I'd love to wrestle the garden as a New York guy, just in general. But yeah, you know, that'd be a very cool feather in the cap. No, we're, we're we're putting that into the the atmosphere there. Yeah. I mean, we're we're doing it, and it all starts at Josh Barnett's What's What Nine. Your campaigns of the garden, like really, 
I mean, that's going to be like that's what this mark. year is called the campaign to the garden. That's the whole tour. You have to 2024. That needs to be assured, good sir. <laughs> now, I mean, uh, aside from wrestling, like what I, I mean, what is uh, kind of getting the juices flowing? Like, uh, is there anything you're watching, uh, anything that you're, you know, uh, you know, listening to that are, I mean, literally powering the Android? Um, I guess everything I do in some way powers the Android. It's all fuel. Like this. I drink exorbitant amounts of coffee, too much coffee, which okay. means I have to drink way too much water to make up for it right. because coffee's a diuretic and you have to stay hydrated. That's important too. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, between working out, stretching, trying to keep my mobility up, making sure my calf is okay, um, keeping pretty busy. I uh, listen to, well, I'd say mostly metal. I play drums. I have an electronic drum kit here. I'm, one day I'll get the acoustic one back. But it's always fun to jam out to whatever I can do with the single pedal right now, which is not a lot of metal, but a little bit of Slayer, which is cool. But um, I've been playing drums for a long time, so that's always a good creative outlet and a good workout, too. And, uh, yeah, besides that, just hanging out, enjoying being back in New York, seeing the family, seeing my friends, getting pizza. The Chinese food's great in New York, too. Never had good Chinese food in L.A. Uh -huh. um, it's amazing that delis aren't a thing everywhere. I always thought that was a thing because if I want to get a bacon, egg, and cheese on a roll, that should be available to me 24-7. Crazy that it's not other other parts of the country. Um, barely any diners. They're only like chain diners, mm -hmm. like yeah. IHOP and Norms and shit, which is better than nothing, but like no regular diners. Very strange. So I just like being back on the East Coast, however cold it might be. But every now and then I like looking at the snow. As long as I don't have to shovel it, I like the snow. And uh, that's been the case so far. Thankfully, knock on wood on that too. Yeah. The, you know, that mid to late March snowfall we always get on the East Coast. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not crazy about 50 degrees. That's what it says. Yeah, that's like sweater weather for you, huh? Yeah. yeah, I mean, literally, that's it. But for I mean, me too, I'm still used to the LA climate. I did not acclimate to New York at all. I'm freezing constantly. It sucks. Eventually, I'll get used to it. But right now, I'm still in LA mode. My what is it? I did not get the, the memo. What's the weather like now? cold all the trees have no leaves on them they're dead because of the cold uh there's a wind it makes me not want to go outside mm. soon daylight savings is gonna uh jump forward so we lose the hour of sleep but uh it'll be light out longer which helps with that too so it might help me want to go outside earlier in the day um but hopefully we get rid of daylight savings too yeah, I yeah. hear that's going on. So it's that stupid. sucks. So let's it's get dumb. rid of it. Arizona doesn't do it. Yeah. Let's go uh, like Arizona, which is the only time I'll ever say that sentence. Or Indiana. Uh, you're going to. Oh, South Indiana. Bend. Yeah. South Bend, actually. Oh, it's South wow. Bend, right by uh, Notre Dame University. Is that, uh, I get that confuses the fuck out of a lot of pilots. Oh, hell yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, hell yes. It does. Uh, but yeah. I mean, pilots have another source of, uh, you know, powering up. But I no. guess. yeah. yeah. Just Computers say. help with that. Yeah. yeah, do I mean uh, the fact that it's cold? The, the do you do anything more? Do you spend more time stretching? Does it take? I mean, you're a vascular guy, uh, so I mean, uh, is there any other concessions that you have to make? You know, in terms of your training regimen? Uh, not in particular. I'm getting a. I like the bare bones home gym setup, which is what I grew up doing. I've been working out since I was like 12 or 13. We always had weights in the garage that my dad had when he was growing up. He just never got rid of them. So I, I would always do shitty home late night garage workouts. So it's very fun for me to start getting a, a nice little shoulder workout at 10 p.m. while watching Netflix just downstairs. I always like that. But I also have a gym membership where I get my real actual workouts in. I don't have a barbell or anything at the house yet, but yeah. I can do enough, which is enough excuse for me not to go outside and just get a workout in the garage. But that's more or less what I'm doing, just working out of my home and – making the workouts take a lot longer because I can take a lot more breaks because I'm at my house. Hell yeah. Fuck yes. Mm -hmm. I, that's, that's good. It's a good man. system. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think so. Yeah. It's uh didn't, I think it was like Mark Marrow, All right. Like a former Johnny B bad who had like a, a super slow workout where he just like, like the craziest rep that you could do, but you just fucking control it. And mm -hmm. that's what he called like super just a slow. different way of working the muscle. If it works, it works. I one time bought something off this. It might have been, uh, oh, who cares where it was? It was a pro wrestling website. And, you yeah. know, with the with the package, I got my thing. Whatever I got, and I also got a couple extra goodies. 
And for some reason, I had a Johnny B bad trading card, vintage WCW, whatever, extra stock. And it like, I had a night side table, like right next to my bed. And there was like these Ikea wireframe drawers that I had. So they were see-through. And I guess I forgot that I had the card and it fell through and landed in one of the drawers. And they're see-through drawers. So one day I'm sleeping, there's a little bit of light. And I look down and I see Johnny B. Bad's fucking face from that trading card looking up at me. I freaked out for a second. I got rid of that thing immediately. Terrifying. With, I mean, the, the eyebrows done. And yeah, the, yeah, yeah, with the fucking, you know, the fucking sweet. confetti gimmick. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a thing. Yeah, it was very sweaty I mean, in that picture. I love Johnny B. Bad as a kid. I mean, Oh, yeah, I great. Like, uh, fantastic. Yeah, fucking like Johnny great. B. But, yeah, I could great see name, that. too. I like Johnny yeah. B. Bad. Yeah, 100%. Isn't that? Yeah. I, I feel like that's a dusty thing, right? Dusty roads. Like, that feels like, yeah, Johnny B. Bad, Johnny B. Good. Nah, that's what we Something do, like baby. That. Like, that just feels like. Dusty. Even if it's not, I'm going to just, you know. Uh, it's fun to think of it that way, either way, yeah. for sure. Yeah, 100%. But yeah. Oh, do you have, did you have, uh, who are your guys growing up? Like, the guys Ooh. that made you want to maybe pursue this? Well, just like everybody else between the ages 20 and 40, Eddie Guerrero was always a huge favorite of mine. Uh, I love watching that guy. I talk about a guy that can do anything, any, anything you ask. He him. could, he, though. He can do it to, at the fucking. It's like the you use cheat codes to max out every stat in the Tony Hawk Pro Skater game. Yes. You skill points, so everything's 10. Somehow he did it. He was a 10 in everything. Mm -hmm. So he he's a guy that I, and I think everybody looks up to. Look how many fucking people do the, the, the three, three amigos, amigos yes. and, the, and the fucking the kilo to the, from the apron to the inside on the down guy. Yeah. And everybody loves that guy. Yeah. Um, Nick Foley was a huge, huge favorite of mine growing up. And that was before I knew he was a fellow Long Islander. That was just wow. the cherry on top afterwards. Uh, love that guy. Talk about fighting spirit. He was the underdog. He was the guy that uh, I always wanted to root for. And uh, always big. I have, a, I have his autograph. My friend's mom got it for me for my ninth birthday. And it was his second book. Uh, Foley is good. And it, that happy ninth birthday, Alex, which was a very nice message. And um, just uh, Scotty Tuhati was probably my third. Uh, and four heads of the Mount Rushmore of me growing up. Scotty Tuhati was definitely number three, wow. at least number three. I got to meet him the first time I ever took a picture with uh, somebody I shared a locker room with. I it, it was with him. It was last year's WrestleMania season in Dallas, and they were running a bunch of shows at his hotel. And uh, our show is ending. His show is starting. I was like, I'm sorry to bother you. Come, just a huge fan. Can I please take a picture? That's the only like Mark picture I ever took in the locker room. Not that there's anything wrong with taking pictures. I just, no. I just never do it, and I should do it more, as everybody else should. Yeah. Preserve these memories. They're good. Right. Things. Mm -hmm. But I was a huge, always a huge Scotty Too Hotty fan. Uh, I, the first move I ever learned at home watching wrestling was the worm. Can still do the worm. I can do a sick worm. And four. Uh, there are a lot of people that I really liked growing up. Fourth is uh, I love the Mishinoku driver. So I probably yes. to talk of Mishinoku a lot too. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh as a my kid, God. I loved the theme song. I watched him every time he was on. Just as a kid, I just couldn't get enough of those guys. Just all four of them. Like he was the like the king of like Shotgun Saturday Night and Jack. Like those yeah, he one a.m. shows. Great fucking time, great theme song. Yeah, Sick move. Good fire. I love the fucking taunt he would do to go for it. Oh, yeah. So cool. Dude, I mean, the way, I mean, I've, you, we've seen people hit Michinoka drivers, but like, it's weird. The, the way that Taka's ass hits mm -hmm. simultaneously as the mm -hmm. back of his opponent fucking, like, it's great. It's mm -hmm. amazing. He's a master. I mean, Michinoku driver. It's actually Michinoku driver number two. But it's been adapted as the Mishinoku driver because that's the one everybody thinks of when they hear Mishinoku driver. Right. Yeah, he's the master of it, man. Nobody does it better. Cedric Alexander does an amazing Mishinoku he driver. Does, also. Yeah. But you got to give it to the OG. Yeah, 100%. Uh, what, I mean, for me, like as a kid, I mean, WrestleMania 10 was my, my favorite. Like mm -hmm. it's hearts all the way up. And down the fucking card, and you know, Brett and Owen, those are my dudes, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, 
do you have a, either a favorite WrestleMania or a favorite match that, as a kid you would go back to and just run out the fucking VHS? Oh, man. There's a few, but one that sticks out to me just for the crowd and being like, man, this is fucking pro wrestling. It's WrestleMania 18 in Toronto where they uh, where it was the Rock and Hogan. Yeah. Just, that's pro. Just two dudes where people are just invested in who they are and what the, what the fucking story is and what each thing represents. They are so invested in them as people. That's just oh, electric. No, hundred percent. I mean, and the fact that like it wasn't it wasn't booked the way that it actually went. Yeah, the whole story where like Rock turned kind of he started working a little bit more heels. So mm-hmm. hoping the cheers, but man, when he hooks up and you know, say what you want about him as a person, you know, racist asshole. But uh, man, as a wrestler, he had the people in the palm of his hands i never heard a crowd like that when he hooked up in the fucking toronto yeah. toronto dome is that what it's called i think yeah it was the sky dome it, sky I dome like, yeah yeah absolutely Whatever. which i mean my goodness i feel like oh shit man like the fact that those were two fucking generals just fucking listening to the crowd they, yep they represented that they were the pinnacle of their respective generations two you can't get two bigger superstars ever you know john cena is a close he's he's like right there too yeah. but like any combination of those three like rock and hogan at that time though that because it was they could both go and they both look fucking great they're both at the fucking pinnacles of their wrestling career it's it's that's a once in a lifetime thing no, 100%. Which, uh, speaking of, I mean, this is a great time for this comment, but the good brother, Rain and Bozio, speaking of two awesome dudes, y'all are awesome. This podcast is his Hogan Rock. Oh, Fuck. hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. Thank you very much, Alan. Yeah. Fact oh, though. Rain, what's up, dude? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> what's going on? Uh, which he'll be at Bloodsport for yes, a fucking he will. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Just that's, that's a fucking good brother amongst good brothers, that one there. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. You, they don't make them like Rain and uh everybody loves raining yeah <laughs> i see what uh, you did there uh, 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 yeah i'm on the east coast now i'm in it yeah yeah That's fuck yes um uh, favorite match uh, i mean obviously this is going to change as your career grows but mm. as of right now you know march 10th 2023 what is the favorite your most favorite match that you've been in that i've been in blood sport seven against tom lawler at the ukrainian culture center I also yeah. liked me versus Roy Sizek at Bloodsport 5. That's the one with no crowd. Both of them I really, really enjoyed. I mean, I liked all the Bloodsport matches. I've had a lot of great matches. Again, I really enjoyed the, the match that I had with, with Josh Barnett in Riverside. Uh, my last Young Lions match against Kratos. Anytime I wrestled someone from the LA Dojo, um, uh, Clark, when we did the LA Dojo special, number two. Right. Uh, tons of, you know, everybody's great. <laughs> But as far as personally sticking out in my mind, Blood Sports 7 with Tom. Tom, yeah, that's that's a fucking that, I think that stands up. That's I, I think that fits. Fuck I it. would love for there to be like a Blood Sport compilation, like have just the highlights. Just like one or two matches from every fucking show. That'd be cool. And I think that would be a good one to have from Blood Sports mm-hmm. 7. You know, yeah, yeah, bad, absolutely. But I'm proud of that match. That was a cool one. That was. And uh uh, Raiden says, uh, yeah, everybody loves Rain and coming to NBC this fall. Hell yeah. I'd yeah, watch 100%. it. Regularly yeah, yeah. scheduled programming. Yes, 100%. Yeah, Not a big season replacement. Not at all. And uh, Spirit Circle Podcast says, hi, I was today years old to know that Alex is from NYC. Actually, you know? Long Island, technically. Close to oh. New York City, but uh, the place that's not as cool as the city when you think of Long Island. Uh, New York in general. But close. Close. Babylon close. Station's an hour train right to... Penn Station, right in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. So, our, I mean, that's literally like going two and a half miles in LA. Is yeah, honestly, we're luck traffic for sure. <laughs> so, oh, man. it's close Bro, to me. Lee, going into LA, I always heard about, you know, oh, LA traffic's the worst. And it's like, I grew up in, you know, Long Island. I've driven through Queens in Manhattan with a minivan. Like, how bad could LA be? LA traffic was the fucking worst. Nothing yeah. could prepare you. So bad. Wait until you get to that booking in Mumbai. It, I talked to this, I was complaining about LA traffic one day, and this guy just like, you yeah, back in my country, like looking out the door, I'm gonna be out in five minutes, and there's nobody on the road. And then fucking gets down 
from his office building and there's like fucking 10,000 vehicles, jeepneys, fucking cars, bikes, people walking. And I was like, mm, I don't feel so bad. Yeah, that uh, kind of puts it in perspective. That helps a little bit. And yeah. seeing all those, uh, those, uh, the Russian dash cam videos where people just, you know, throw axes at each other. Yeah. I, I, America's not traffic that, wise as bad as some other places. Right. Exactly. But as far as I've dealt with, LA's the fucking worst. LA's is the fucking worst. Yeah. Earth. But again, I mean, uh, wait until that, uh, what is it, Great Power Uti in Africa or oh my God. somebody in Mumbai oh, gets man, that geez. booking, bro. <laughs> the financial investor. <laughs> hey, if they pay me, I don't give a shit. Just get but me there yes. and back. I'm fine. You bring a merch. I'm cool with it. There you go. Just close and my financial. eyes. Put me in the car. Yeah, exactly. Fuck it. Right on. Uh, funniest moment of the mirror match. Mirror match? Ring a bell? Oh, uh, it might have been Bloodsport 7 because... Uh, Tom came out dressed as me. Oh, yes! Which was, by the way, a complete and total surprise because the entire time beforehand I would see him and he was wearing his Daisy Dukes and had a face mm -hmm. mask on the whole time. I was like, oh, that's really nice of him, being very COVID conscious up until the bell. But he was hiding that he uh, shaved a mustache. And uh, he immediately took off his uh, Daisy Dukes as soon as I entered first and had black trunks on underneath it. That, it, yes. It, it, I was like, this motherfucker. Yes, <laughs> yes 100%. Yeah. And I, I was there for most of those matches, all bangers, uh, said mm -hmm. Raiden. And uh, my goodness, did you have you ever seen that clip of uh, Tom when he was in the UFC and he fucking cosplayed for weigh-ins as Dan Severn? Yes. That's, to me, I was like, fucking Tom Lawler is He's the amazing. Best. Yeah. He's, yeah. I, yeah. I thought you were going to say, you ever see the clip of Tom Lawler where he just punches the guy in the fuck you face in the ultimate fighter where they're all in the house and the dude's really drunk. He's like, oh, you can't knock me out. No one could knock me out. And he's like, you, you punch me. You won't knock me out. And Tom's okay, dude, I'll do yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Boom. And he clocked him. Fucking. Yeah. That's that's what, I mean, we that's expect. Tom Lawler in essence. And I mean, fucking, mm. I mean, Las Vegas native, like, Grew up there, family from there, and shit like that. Filthy man from Sin get. City himself. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's it. He's, he's an like, individual. Like Burt Kreischer is Florida, and I feel like Tom Lawler is Vegas. That's yeah. If there is somebody that embodies mm -hmm. where they're from, yeah. If you look at Tom Lawler, you see what he does. His entrance, you're like, eh, it looks like Vegas. That's Vegas. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's from the strip. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah, poor grammar, funniest moment of that mirror match. Yeah, hundred oh, percent. We got you. We got you. We got there. We got there. Uh, but speaking of uh, getting there, obviously, you know, to get to Bloodsport Night, you have had a throng of people who have supported you. Um, let's get some shout outs out of the way. You take as long as tonight. I'm gonna put you full screen, good sir. Ooh, all right. As far yeah. as shout outs, always to the LA Dojo home. You starting with Eddie Thorpe now in NXT. Check him out. It's Clark, the Wild Rhino, Gabriel, the Young Bull, Mechanical Bulls. We're gonna kick ass soon. Don't you worry, everybody. DK, Kevin, also known as Jet, the Jet, uh, DKC. I should say, not just DK. That's disrespectful. The DKC, Yuya, Narita, everybody holding it down in America and Japan. Uh, like the things, but like the. As far as wrestlers go, I'm gonna keep it short because this is gonna be a whole rambly thing. But LA Dojo. Uh, for one, an LA Dojo for all, you know, for life. And uh, thank you very much for having me on the podcast. This is the second time. Check out Bloodsport 9 coming up March 30th, the Ukrainian Culture Center. Can you remind me what time that show is? It's a that little earlier in the day. 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. For life. For life. Yeah. There it is. Absolutely. Oh, check this out. For life. life. Oh, you turn that one oh, around. Oh, LA. Shit. LA. LA Dojo. For life, life. I I'll like on that one. Get back yes. to you, but the bones are there. Yeah, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, we got a run in, and this will be uh, this will be it. But what are some of Alex's favorite drummers? Uh, do you apply mm -hmm. anything you learn from music to wrestling? Which I think Ooh. is a great question. Off the top of my head, I really like Bron Daler from Mastodon. It's influenced by Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater, who was another Long Island guy. But again, I was a fan of theirs beforehand. Um, a lot of guys, Dave Lombardo is the reason that I picked up drumsticks to begin with. That's another whole story. But um, yeah, a lot of the guys, mostly the, the thrash metal and the metal is what inspired me initially, but I play a little bit of everything. Whatever's fun 
and whatever I could just jam and groove to, I love. I like to break it down into shuffles every now and then, but I'm not going to get too far off subject. But another no, shout out to I... Bernard Purdy as far as drummers go. Oh, Purdy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love those shuffles, man. So mm -hmm. fun. Classic. The Purdy shuffle. Fuck yes. Mm -hmm. I'll jam on my leg. I, I can never tell who I'm annoying the shit out of because just constantly. I'm a drummer and I spent the last four years not playing drums in LA. And that energy of always stopping my feet, tapping my hands, always playing fucking whatever. And shuffles are just something I subconsciously do on my leg while I'm just sitting down like this whole podcast. I've been tapping away. So I'm glad I have that outlet now where I can actually play drums. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I mean, uh, what is it? Like living above the dojo uh, doesn't afford that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, like, yeah. Maybe don't bring your drums. Yeah. There's no therapist <laughs> room. And then nobody would have put up with that. They'd be like, shut the fuck up. You can't play drums. We're trying to sleep. We're tired. You just did 500 squats. Not that I would have the energy to play drums after doing 500 squats, but maybe eventually. Yeah. No. Oh, uh, Speaking of uh, Mike Portnoy, uh, have you heard of the Winery Dogs? Yes. That was one of his uh, post dream theater projects, right? Yeah, that was uh, him. Uh, what's his name? Oh God, uh, Billy Sheehan from uh, Mr. Big, and mm. uh, fuck, why am I blanking on his name? He actually used to date uh, Brie Bella before Danielson. Uh, God, uh, 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 Richie Coxon. There. You okay. Go. Yeah, the three piece. Fucking, okay, I mean, it's probably like prog rock, prog metal, yeah, very prog rocky, yeah. Cool, cool. But I mean, aside from like instrumental being, shit, no, 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 fucking who sings uh, Richie, Richie oh, okay. on guitar and fucking singing because cool. I, he was, I mean, uh, during the dying days of like a hair metal band, right? Like, I feel like Richie was in one of them, but like the third member twice removed and shit like that. But mm -hmm. he's got some fucking vocals, man. So yeah, yeah. Check that out a little bit more. I've heard of them. I've checked out a couple of things he's done since then. Yeah. Was he in Chicken Foot? Was that him? No, no. no. Chicken Foot was. Uh, that was a guy uh, from Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. No, that yeah. Was it was Chad, Chad Smith, Smith right? Satriani, yeah. uh, Sammy Hagar, and uh, oh, fuck, Michael Anthony from Van Halen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hagar yeah. and Anthony. Interesting. Yeah. I, I, feel, I, have to I remember mean, what I'm thinking of as far as porn. He's done a lot of shit. He was in a Bench Sevenfold for, for a hot minute. Yeah. That was cool. Fuck, yeah. I mean, Raynan's dad was in fucking corn for a minute, you know? That's true. Yeah. yeah. It's All fucking world. dope. Yeah. Great. Terry Bozio. Oh, yes. Yeah. But uh, he's a modern guitar god, you know, and can sing like a motherfucker. Yeah. Richie Clotson. Hell yeah. Fuck yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, Alex, man, uh, it's been great. I can't wait to see you again. It goes out March 30th in LA, the Ukrainian Cultural uh, Center in East Hollywood, right, as a part of the GCW Collective. It's Josh Barnett's Bloodsport 9 going down at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you can't be there with us, you can check it out on Fight TV uh, as a package with the Collective or just a la carte with Bloodsport itself. So definitely uh, check it out. But uh, bro, plug all the shit you got. Uh, where can we find you on the socials? Okay, Twitter. It's at Alex Coglin 93 Spelled like you see down here on the screen, like the word cough, L-I-N, but pronounced cog. I don't know, Irish people sometimes. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at something something deadlift. Would be easier if it was the same name, but I'm too attached to it. I'm not going to change it. It's a funny name. And that's basically all, all I'm at on, uh, on the socials. But uh, you could check out New Japan, whatever, on Twitter and Instagram. Type in NJPW. You'll find them, and hopefully you'll find me when they book me a little bit more often. You can see my shit at NewJapanWorld.com. Type my dumb last name up in the search bar, and you'll check out all the stuff for World Tag League, all the stuff that we've been doing on Strong in America since then. And uh, check out Bloodsport coming up soon, like you said before. What is it Fight.TV? Is that on it? Yes, it is. Uh, Fight.TV. Check it out. And the whole collective, if, uh, if you want to see even more varied wrestling, too. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But thank you guys all for joining us here. And uh, Alex, you've, uh, you've definitely subscribed to the podcast, haven't you? Oh, absolutely. I'd, I'd feel like an idiot if I didn't. Absolutely. Only stupid people would subscribe to this podcast. Just you don't want to be stupid, do you? Nah. Do you? There's some people on TikTok, but that's another story for another day. But uh, be like Alex Hoffman, the Android, and go ahead and subscribe to the According to Woods podcast. And Hit that subscribe button wherever it is. Wherever it is. It's, it's somewhere. somewhere in here. 
yeah. somewhere in here. Uh, but if you don't believe me, you don't believe Alex, and I don't know why you wouldn't, well, here's Zeta Zang to help convince you. Hey, this is Zeta Zang. Make sure you subscribe to According to Woods YouTube.